when Tool was formed um, and the videos came out, and I think they inspired everyone, whether you know it was chicken or egg, whether they knew the music first or the videos first. I always feel so anticlimactic calling that work video. Everything from the fucking casting of the actors to the design to everything is so cinematic. Um, was that grueling on a level to give, again, birth to that? Or was that kind of, you know, we want to do something different here? Um, I'm going to be honest. Yeah. Adam does those. Uh, I was involved in some of the uh, some of the initial uh, direction on the first couple of videos, but uh, once Adam gets going, yeah, get out of the room. <laughs> what about editorially? Knock knock. Who's there? Control freak. Now you say control freak who? C control. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I hope Adam's not here. Uh, Supposed to be. Yeah, I think Adam, are you <laughs> he here? just left if he I'm was here. Bottle in my head right now. <laughs>
Talk a little bit more about your art and moving images. Thinking of you as a guest for this series, to me, you're the perfect guest because your work is so, you know, the, the world of, of all the bands you've, you've midwifed. <laughs> I, I was trying to find the right verb wet, wet all nursed. week. I think it's midwifing, be that as it may. How important are visuals? I know it all starts with the music, but how important are the visuals to your legacy as a musical artist? Um, I, think th I think they're kind of, uh, you can't really separate them. They're joined at the hip, uh, everything. The, yeah, the, especially with, uh, well, I guess with all three bands, really. Um, but especially with the new uh, project, with everything kind of tying in with animation, with uh, some of the visual arts you saw meets Meyer's work up on this last uh, meets is clip. amazing yeah but uh, you know everything just not not just the music though we have more than just uh, film and uh, uh, animation and music there's also characters attached to it so you can kind of develop almost like a, a storyline of people so we're kind of writing yeah. little scripts on the side and then scrambling to try to connect them together because we didn't really think about that before we started writing the characters so it's uh, quite an exercise but uh, yes I think uh, the visuals are definitely Im imperative. When you, s when you and, and, and your circle think of the visual design, how, how long does that take? Is that a, a stressful process or is that a liberating process? I don't think any of those things are, you're able to separate those things. Though people kind of think of, uh, you know, when, you know, the wall was written uh, as if it was like one actual moment in time that actually kind of, and it all just kind of laid out in front of you. No, it was, a, it was a lifetime of kind of putting those pieces together and there might be pieces that they took from various decades of their life that kind of end up fitting together in some way. So I think that's kind of how, that's, that's how I kind of put a lot of these things together. It's, it's, it's reference points spread over in a lifetime. Have you ever seen the wall in concert? Yes. What do you think of the wall as a concert experience? I enjoyed it. Uh, I think it's uh, just, and especially coming from a, a, a point of view of understanding production and understanding what it took to get that thing in a building. Yeah. Um, one of our friends who works with Pussifer was the, uh, the, the stage manager on, on one of those tours. And they had every door in uh, an arena, stadium, every door, every path in was being used to bring in bricks and people and gear rigging every it was just you know i don't know how many uh, semi trucks for those of you who've worked on a set or you know building some uh, elaborate uh, big hollywood blockbuster that's really daunting just to to actually walk onto that set and and just imagine what happened to get you there and it's even more daunting when you walk onto the empty space to start to build it uh you know like, oh, how the fuck are we going to do this Weren't you studying design or uh, construct some uh, idea of scenic design? Studying sculpture and printmaking in in Michigan. Yeah. Um, uh, and I was trying to figure out how to turn that into a more three dimensional practical uh, application, rather than just I don't know. Just being an art student, I was I kind of hit a wall where I was like, why? I don't understand why I was painting. Uh, um, didn't make any sense. Uh, so the sculpture kind of ended up feeling like it had some kind of functional you know, functional path or functional direction, and that kind of ended up stumbling into eventually working on sets in art department, painting drywall some other color than I was, that I'd chosen. And then you met another young man who was working with people like Stan Winston and Rick Lazzarini, a guy named Adam Jones. I'm sure you guys know Adam. Um, what was that, not to dip too much into cliche, but from a visual m movie almost standpoint, what was that meeting like? Were you and Adam into films? Were you, were you like, did you bond on a level of, of moving imagery, similar aesthetics, that kind of thing? Um, yeah, kind of. Uh, he, he comes from a completely different background as far as, uh, you know, this, the, ho the Hollywood side of, of, of structure, working in a, in a studio. A lot of the guys that worked on, on a lot of the special effects you see in films are very compartmentalized and not really sure what piece they're actually putting together compared to the next guy down the line. Uh, I think in Adam's case, he was uh, in a studio that was a little more hands-on, a little more thorough, understanding the little bits and pieces. Uh, when I worked in stuff, it was a lot, a lot more disjointed. Um, and of course, non-union, so you're doing everything or trying to anyway. When I moved out to L.A. not too long ago, I found out that more people are in fucking bands out here 
than in the movies. That actually kind of shocked me a little bit. What do you think about film people navigating in music, like actors who have bands? Do you have any kind of natural allergy to that, or do you kind of keep an open mind to that? Um, I, th- I think it, on, in rare occasions, uh, you, can, you can make the transition back and forth. I think it's hard for a musician to make the transition into film actor because you're so used to being in your own head and being pointed at for being, you know, you and what you've done. Yeah. It's hard to remove yourself from yourself and become who the director wants you to become unless you're just being, you know, plopped down in there to to be you and they just film you. But isn't live performance isn't is that acting for you when you get up on stage are you acting? No, you know, the songs are generally written there's there's almost like a, like waypoints in the song from moments in your life that bring you back to them every time you sing them. Uh, so you're not really, you know, I guess some moments you kind of click out, but for the most part, you're back in it. Yeah. Uh, you're conscious of it. I am anyway. So it's hard to, it's hard to remove myself from that. But I think going back to your question, I think it's actually, I have an aversion to it. The actor becoming the musician because a lot of time, unless they're the exception to the rule, yeah. they have the character generally poured into them. They're not really, it's not coming from them. The story was written by somebody else. So to watch an actor act like a musician and act like they're writing songs, I can kind of see through it. That's, I don't mean that to sound so negative because I, like I said, there are some absolute exceptions to that rule. If we can finish it, the album, maybe we can consider <laughs> that fifth album. <laughs> and by the way, do I strike you as a very lazy person? Then stop blaming me. 